awesome. This is Bo Sanders from the City of Angels. Doug Badgett Radio is brought to you by enthusiastic listeners like me. You can join the revolution at DougPadgettRadio.com. Doug Padgett Radio is produced in conjunction with Not Quite Right Broadcasting. Hey, welcome back to Doug Padgett Radio. We're uh, broadcasting live out of the Twin Cities, and uh, apparently we've started a revolution now. People can we join have? the people can join the revolution over at DougPadgettRadio.com. What are we re- revolting? Oh, we're revolutionizing. What are we? What are we? Uh, you know, religious radio. That's not quite radio. Right. Everything we're revolutionizing life. You know, I told. I don't think you're a true revolutionary. If you have to ask what we're revolutionizing, <laughs> I don't think you have truly tasted of the glory. If one has to ask, um, what is it again that well, we're revolutionizing? Say re- revolutionary religious radio. That's not quite right. It just says. Rel- I mean, it's a big. Join the revolutionary. A big join, join the what revolution. What is that? An adjective or an adverb? I can't remember. Join the revolution. I don't. Yeah. What revolution. was? I don't, yeah. Well, it's a noun. Maybe. Well, yes. I don't know. Well, we are. We are. We are changing the world. You know, I said to a friend the other day that I hadn't seen in like a year. I was on. I was on your radio show, and mm-hmm. her, and she went when I said religious radio not for the not quite right. She went. She recoiled in her seat like I had hit her because of the word religious radio. Well, I don't or know. Not I was afraid right. to ask her. I didn't know, so I didn't. I just went, yeah, it could mean a lot of things, and then I went back to my <laughs> salad. I was surprised, like oh, I, really? I, I didn't, I didn't expect such a violent physical re- recoil. response from her. Yeah, hmm. I, didn't, uh, well, I don't know what to think well, of. Well, she's probably now someone who needs to, par- needs to participate in the revolution. I'll have to pray for her. I don't she know. I sh- to, maybe she needs to pray for me. She, she might be. I don't because know. I do really, I, I truly do think, and I know a lot of listeners here think so too, that, that, that there's something going on where it, it feels as if we are on the, we're, we're in what's what the, sometimes technical uh, theologians like to call a liminal period. Liminality, mm-hmm. do you know that word? Mm-hmm. Do you hear that word? Liminal I mean, space. Nobody uses the word liminal space, but, but a lot of theologians like to I describe that as this place in between, mm-hmm. you know? Um, this, this and where there's kind of a reverberation, right? Yeah, where there's a there's a lot of the past, and there's something of the of yeah. what's coming, and you're kind of living in a in a. It's a musical term, isn't in a, it? In a chamber of those. Oh, it is. I I think so. Like the space between notes, or oh, the liminal space between notes. I they they use it that way. I don't know oh. for sure. Well, that's a nice way to think of it, isn't it? Is the space between notes? Yeah. Um, that that it's there's still a reverberation of one period and there's mm-hmm. something else that's coming and, w- and we're it, it feels like sort of in culture at least in North American culture and maybe some other um, European cultures that we're in this in between space mm-hmm. and that the old structures and the old world aren't going to work and there's something new that's mm-hmm. coming so so that's the revolution yeah. right the revolution isn't just it's in religion in between it's it's you it's the making it's, it's the making of the new thing. It's well, that's why I was thinking coming. when you're talking about emerging and asking Rob about what that means. And mm-hmm. I was thinking we're the, like the ings, we're the gerunds, we're the, oh. you know, the happening, becoming, but. But but not yet becomed. Yeah. Well, and that's part of what I like about being a part of this community at Solomon's Porch and, you know, the broader Doug Paget religious radio that's not quite right community that there's an ing. Mm-hmm. It's okay to be to not be a static right certain set mm-hmm. that there's a, there's there's an okayness about considering and change and mm-hmm. not being sure mm-hmm. asking but questions. it's curious because there's this much pressure on the liberal progressive side mm-hmm. to be settled mm-hmm. absolutely right i mean it is um there is a fundamentalism is not just a conservative thing. No, right? and, and this is to Rob's Rob, point, yeah. you just have to give out whether you're, you mm-hmm. do it with, I mean, I felt this way when I was a vegan for 10 years. Like I sometimes, the vegans sometimes bothered me as much as some of my very, very conservative Christian friends because mm-hmm. they're so militant about it. Mm-hmm. I had to be precise and they never thought I was a good enough vegan. And it mm. just kind of turned me off to the, I mean, I don't, I don't mean to diss vegans. I, I was a vegan for 10 years, but I never felt like I was good enough for the uh, vegans or the Christians or anybody really for that matter. And uh, it kind of 
wore me out. I didn't yeah. really want to be a part of any very militant community. It mm-hmm. just yeah, because I found there's it a pure, exhausting. Because there's a purity to it, and there's yeah. and there's a purity of of emergings too, which I've noticed. What is it? Well, it's that same sensibility, right? Because that sensibility can show up in the conservative side that's fairly obvious Mm -hmm. what conservative um it's familiar um settled um Mm -hmm. uh, thought is and it can show up in the settled progressive side or liberal side of of an issue and it can show up in the ing the jaren side of this thing Mm -hmm. right that there's because in that world the pressure is to never settle on something (laughs) yeah that if you do decide you're certain about something then you've backslid into right because as soon as you've like um as soon as you have something situated Mm -hmm. so so this i i mean i I hear these kinds of comments a lot like people are like well you know churches like salma's porch you know they used to be i mean they're kind of they're kind of emerging but but not really because you know like they have a like they have a building and like they they meet every week and they're kind of in a place and yeah they've Mm -hmm. done some new things but they're kind of settled in right there's this it's the it's the the problem with the ing side Mm -hmm. is that it can have this perpetual um what have you done emerging lately you know what have you done for me lately (laughs) kind of sensibility right like and if you don't sort of keep up on that pathway if Mm -hmm. you don't keep up on those things if you actually make a decision about something yes if you actually temporary yeah if you actually settle in on something even Mm -hmm. for a period of time or if you've if you've not if you're not in the in the constant process of deconstructing, mm-hmm. which I mean, I think we, I think one ought to always be in the constant process of yeah. deconstructing. I actually think that's a very good thing. I think we should make mm-hmm. that the norm. Mm-hmm. Um, but doesn't mean you can do that on everything All simultaneously. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I mean, at some point you're just like, well, good grief. Like I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm going to live in this little world for a while while I'm figuring out some other yeah. things. Um, so, so there becomes a, there, there becomes a, um, a settledness of the never settling on things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. It, it's, it's, you know, I mean, this isn't, this isn't a direct correlation, but it's like the, um, it's, it's like the perpetual bachelor mm-hmm. sort of guy, right? That, that like critiques his friends who all get married because yeah. they don't, you know, because they don't know the, the, the freedom yeah. of never settling down, right? This yeah. kind of thing. And so you get the kind of perpetual bachelor thing in this huh. in this world and so that's where i think you know to the point of the conversation from the last the last segment um it's helpful that, that we have to come up with not just new conclusions mm-hmm. but with additional ways of dealing with one another's um certitude hmm. nice because certitude um is really important for one person and not at all tolerable for, for another yes yeah Right. And that's the that's the interesting place to have to figure out how to mm-hmm. how to live, mm-hmm. um, because when and, and this is the difference between like the old conversations of progressivism and, and, and conservatism, you know, when 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 religious conversations want to uh, get together and say, hey, let's just not talk about anything that we have difference around. Let's just mm-hmm. talk about the things that we all have in common, that kind of yeah. thing, you know, mm-hmm. or, um, that's, oh, yeah. not, that's, not inter- that's not fun. That's not interesting. <laughs> you know, um, it's more fun to talk about. Well, how did you get here and where mm-hmm. do you think this is going? Right. Mm-hmm. That's a that's a much more fluid kind of conversation as opposed to what have you settled on? Where are you now mm-hmm. on these topics? Um, but but that whole fluidity thing also has to be sort of held in some in some um, in some caution. Yeah, because no, because one fair. because one could find themselves um that once you form an opinion, then then it's then it's just super easy to critique someone else for having come down on something. And, and I'm mm-hmm. I'm I'm chief chief sinner in this in in this regard, right? Because you know I have a lot of friends who um, who do their religious uh, emerging within some kind of a of a historic system, mm-hmm. and, and I'm like, ah, oh, jeez, come on. You can't. You mean like a denomination? Is that yeah, what you're sure. trying to say well, without saying? Yeah, or, yeah, it could be a denomination, or it could or a be particular like, theological, or a particular theological stream, or, okay. or inside mm-hmm. of a larger tradition. I mean, the mm-hmm. denomination is sort of the most 
the most pointed uh-huh. of, of that of that thing. But it could yeah. be a, a tradition or it could uh-huh. be a theological stream. Yeah, I mean, I'm unwilling to even align myself with any particular theological stream, even though there's mm-hmm. a number of them that I could easily mm-hmm. claim, but I'm never going to because that just doesn't fit. That just sort of doesn't fit my temperament. So I'm the sort of person who is, is guilty of this um, being on people forever settling uh, on something mm-hmm. right because it doesn't because it doesn't seem reasonable to me that someone um who's uh, uh would would stall out on that one <laughs> um, so i i think it's uh, i think it's i think we're in the midst of a revolution that there's a whole new way of doing many many things in our society and our culture and religion yeah. is is um is, is reflecting that or yeah a part of it it's that's right in the midst of it that's right. It's simply it's simply one of the one of the factors of it. And this mm-hmm. is what th- th- this is what makes it hard because it's not totally clear that we all know um, the the role and the function of religion in a world like this. Mm-hmm. Does it actually have a place? So in mm-hmm. a couple of weeks we're going to have on some atheists and um, uh, in in conversation. You know, I want to have as a regular part of the show. You know, we have mm-hmm. we have progressive Christians and we have progressive Jews and progressive Muslims and I want to have on some progressive atheists, atheists because or some emerging atheists would, would, would be a better way to say it. We, we have emerging Christians and emerging Jews and emerging Muslims. I want to have some emerging atheists because th- I think that they could bring a really helpful critique mm-hmm. of the role of religion yeah. in our world. I think that, it's, yeah. Because they need to, we need the whole system to work. This is this is what happens when you're in transitions in a in a culture. You need all parts of the system to work because it's a big social system. So mm-hmm. it all has to uh, it all has to function, and we have some some gaping holes still in our society. What um, are they? Well, we'll talk about this with the atheists, but but I do think that the I think that we don't have a very viable option of being an atheist. Mm-hmm. So theism, believing in God, is the default Mm -hmm. to such a cultural norm Mm -hmm. that to not be that, you have all the explaining to do. Mm -hmm. And I think that's bad for religion. Mm -hmm. I agree. I think if if all religion is doing is saying which expression of of religious life do you think fits you best, as Mm -hmm. opposed to um, one saying, "How how do you even think about God? God and the notion of God and the nature of God and is there mm-hmm. God that that's really where you have to start if mm-hmm. once once you have a mass culture that has assumed that now you're missing out on a lot of the fun and I think that our atheist friends have um, not always expressed the wide range of reasons for their perspective Mm -hmm. and then i'm not blaming them for Mm -hmm. that just stating that as well Mm -hmm. that has to be different it's a pretty inhospitable climate so yeah like right room right there's room yeah there there should be there should be many more like christians have spent and jews and muslims and, and 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 other religious people have spent a lot of time giving many, many, many rationale for their belief. Mm-hmm. And we need that same thing out of the the non-divine declaring people. <laughs> the non-divine declaring you can't people. just have the, well, you can't prove it. So like, you know, you know yeah. what I'm saying? That's the that's, a- NDDs. Yeah. Non-div- it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, I think that that's going to be a very interesting, a very interesting kind of conversation. Yeah, so we're going to, um, to it. so hold, hold, hold tight here. We're going to um, have, have a little, uh, just a little audio break, um, but, but no break in the, uh, in the, in the speaker flow. Uh, and then we're going to come back with the right on and the right on is going out to an unusual recipient from the uh, from the radio show, at least at least I think it's unusual an for you. Yeah, unusual for me. Mm-hmm. 